I thought Deborah was going to insist I do the housekeeping rules in the case in case of an emergency. Uh, but thank you very much for that introduction, Deborah. Kati o kūranga tira kūtu katoa kua tai mai nei ki runga ite nei kau papa fakaida hira. He te tua kana e hohe pa nau te mihi fakatau ki te tini kua tai mai nei mai te hiku o teika tai noa tu ki te wai pau namu hoi no taku hei tau toko ake i ngā kupu fakatau ki a tātou katoa ki runga i te kaupapa e karanga hi ake nei. I te pāpā e ngā maru, hoi noe mihi atua nau ki ākoe, wai hō nei tōta maiti hei whakahoki atu i ngā mihi o tō tātou taumata kōrero i te rā nei. Hoi noe he kite ngā kanohi he hoki ngā mahara. Nō reira pai te kite atu i ākoe me tō ora. Mauri a mai o puke ngā nui, hei whakamaori ake i tō tātou hui huinga i te rā nei. Nō reira e te pāpā te ngā koe kāti ki a tātou katoa, e o ku whāia, Louise, Maraia, te ngā koutou, Tātou katoa e pai nei, greetings one and all. It's fantastic to be here today, and I want to extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you. Those who work in this particular space, work with our people, work within the boundaries of often restraint when I look at the institutions that serve our people. This is one of those opportunities where we all come together for the same purpose. And I want to acknowledge each and every one of you for taking the time out to bring your considerable expertise, your knowledge, your stories, your data, and everything to the rich conversation that will be had over the next couple of days. Uh, I bring with me the apologies of the Minister for Health, the Honourable Dr David Clark, uh, and other colleagues who sadly can't be with us today, but I know share the concerns and indeed the impetus that we all have to make sure that this conference is a success. Thank you also to the Ministry of Health Long-Term Conditions team, um, Health Navigator New Zealand and Health Literacy New Zealand for organising this forum. It's great to see such a strong focus of equity in the programme ahead of you. As the Associate Minister of Health, I have delegations for the prevention and management of diabetes, the Health Promotion Agency, Māori Health Equity and Blood and Organ Donation. I always have to catch myself when I say I'm the Minister for Diabetes. But it's one of those things we all learn. Um, as we progress with the conversations, we have how important it is in the first instance to get the language right. Like many countries, we face some big long-term challenges, such as, growing, such as a growing and ageing population, an increasing prevalence of chronic diseases such as diabetes and cancer. None of these challenges are new to any of us in the room here but they are complex and we need to work collectively to ensure we can come up with a solution. I'm very aware of the huge burden diabetes and other long-term conditions place on our people, in particular Māori and Pacific people. Our population is living longer, but some are also living longer in poor health. Getting on top of the burden of long-term conditions, therefore, is absolutely essential. Our journey needs to start with keeping people well, supporting people to understand and make healthy lifestyle choices, fits across many of the areas of my portfolios. I'm very pleased to see some of the presentations over the next two days focus on prevention of ill health and promotion of healthy lifestyle choices. Many long-term conditions develop as a consequence of four common risk factors known to us all, eating unhealthy food, being inactive, smoking tobacco and drinking alcohol. I believe that we must have a multi-pronged approach to prevention and management of long-term conditions, both targeted prevention and management efforts, as well as a general population-wide approach. This includes better education about the decisions we make now and how they affect us later on in life. Some of you may have heard of Healthy Active Learning, a new wellbeing initiative that promotes healthy eating and physical activity in kura and kohanga services across Aotearoa. It is a cross-government initiative, and the Ministries of Health and Education and Sport New Zealand provide support through curriculum, resources, and a new health promotion workforce, as well as physical activity advisors. The initiative is based on evidence showing that children's nutrition and physical activity are linked to both academic achievement and improved physical and mental health. The initiative also has potential to spread as young people take their new knowledge and information home and are key influences in their whānau. However, we must do better to harness our young people. 
when planning and reviewing services, for they are indeed our future. As Minister for Youth, this is important. I dare say I'm one of the youngest in the room here. So the <laughs> I won't tell you how old I am. We need to empower our young people so that they can make healthier choices. How many children know the long-term health risks of sugar consumption or, in, or an inactive lifestyle? I dare say not enough. We need to change this, and we can only do this together. I want to acknowledge the need for us all to support Māori aspirations in this sector. Te Tiriti o Waitangi is the lens by which my people, the Māori people, operate and live. In order for us to meet those challenges, we must have positive confirmation of the work that's needed in front of us. Let's acknowledge as a sector that we need to make significant changes in how we design and deliver services if we're to make the difference necessary to achieve fair outcomes for Māori. All of us here today understand that many determinants of health and well-being are outside the health sector. We know that living in substandard housing, having low education achievement, and limited access to transport all affect our health outcomes. It is up to all of us to work across sectors to influence the unequal conditions that affect the health of whānau. The prevalence of diabetes among Māori is about twice that of non-Māori, and there are much higher disparities between Māori and non-Māori for diabetes complications. For example, rates of renal failure for Māori aged 15 and over with concurrent diabetes are currently more than five times that of non-Māori at the same age. The Ministry of Health is working in consultation with Māori to develop a Māori Health Action Plan to support and further embed the Māori Health Strategy, He Korowai Oranga. An initial engagement process for the development of, this next, of the next Māori Health Action Plan is complete. The Action Plan will be an important tool ensuring the health and disability sector is working collaboratively to deliver high quality and effective services that support Māori health, well-being and aspiration. We are investing $10 million over four years into Māori workforce development, which will incentivise and support Māori students into health professions. In a brief conversation before I came through the door, I said to my auntie here, that's fantastic. We need more doctors, Māori doctors. We need more Māori nurses and so on. What I would also like to challenge us uh, on is we also need strong Māori administrators, strong Māori leadership across the institutions that serve our people. We've also increased our Ōwahatanga Hauora Māori, the Māori Health Innovation Fund, by $4 million over four years to support Māori health providers to develop and pilot new Māori-led health initiatives. We are increasing the funding of whānau order-based services by $80 million over four years. The funding will expand the coverage and impact of whānau order, and this includes increased commissioning activities to provide greater support to whānau and support for improved localised decision-making accountability. I want to emphasise the word whānau. We know that if mum or dad are unwell and they present with many of the uh, health issues that you are all aware of, diabetes, chronic heart disease and others, we know then that there are there's a strong possibility that there are issues within that household, whether it be diet, inactivity, lack of exercise and other issues. Therefore, the strength of the word whānau cannot be undersold in this forum. I also want to talk about the Pacific people. Pacific people also bear a disproportionate health burden from long-term conditions. Pacific adults are two and a half times more likely to be obese and more than three times likely to have diabetes than non-Pacific people. The Ministry is currently developing a Pacific Health Action Plan to improve equity after a series of community and sector talanoa about it were held late last year. We've put almost $10 million in the Pacific Innovation Fund, which aims to better resource, drive, and assess innovative community health projects that improve Pacific people's health and well-being. Through our Pacific Provider Fund, the Ministry helps to strengthen uh, the, capa the capability of Pacific health providers to deliver high-quality health services and a distinctive Pacific focus and achieve the best health outcomes for Pacific people. Last year, the fund went to 28 Pacific health providers to improve their services. I know that some of the programs being showcased at the forum over the next two days 
have been supported with Māori and Pacific innovation funding in the past. Te Ranga Ora is an example of equity-focused system of care for primary and community services at the county's Manukau Health. The target population for this initiative is Māori and Pacific people and those living in quintile five areas of deprivation with two or more long-term conditions. Whilst the project is in its earliest stages, I understand that the new system of care will be co-designed with service users and their whānau. I wish them well and will be very keen to follow up on the progress of this work. You will know that many people with lived experience of mental distress experience poorer outcomes for their physical conditions. There is increased in awareness of the relationship between mental health and physical health, and the increased burden for people managing both. Improving our mental health and addiction services and integrating these with physical health services is a top priority for this government. The inquiry into the mental health and addiction culminated in the panel's report, He Ara Oranga, and charts a new direction for mental health and addiction in Aotearoa, New Zealand. This government's response to the report resulted in the 2019 wellbeing budget. This budget supports the delivery on many of the report's recommendations, investing 1.9 billion in mental health and addiction initiatives over the next five years. This significant and sustained investment supports initiatives across a range of portfolios, including health, education, corrections, justice and housing. We are investing 455 million over four years to expand access and choice in primary mental health and addiction services. Having better access to these essential services when they need it will greatly improve the long-term health of Aotearoa. The two-day forum program looks fantastic. I'm looking forward to, I understand uh, John, Mr. John Fanger will be spending time with you. I hope you are all fully engaged in the conversation and the presentation that he and his team have for you. This will rise to some of the challenges that I present to you all here today. Knowing full well that if a Māori health action plan is successful, we can do this across other populations. One of the challenges as I look across the room, and I talked about the lack of young people, is of course diversity. And I want to leave that challenge on the floor for this forum to consider over the next two days. Tackling the burden of long-term conditions facing New Zealand is a huge task and a huge ask. I am sure the opportunity you will have over the next two days to discuss and share with each other will be very useful moving forward. Can I wish each and every one of you all the best in this forum? I look forward to following up the many discussions that will be had, both official and unofficial discussions at a forum like this, and look forward to continuing to support many of the organisations who I know are well represented here today. Kanui tēnei māku, e o kuranga tira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, ki oro tātou katoa. Finally, a big thank you to all of the many hands that make these events uh, happen. I know it takes hard work to bring so many people from around the country to Pōneke uh, to discuss very important matters. So a big thank you to all of the Ringaraupa that make these events possible. Kia ora tātou.